Hello po, magandang Tuesday sa ating lahat. Maayon na at love ko na. I'm Jace Delcano po, isang chemistry intern dito sa Philippi Hub. At muli, I welcome you po to another episode of Chemistry Tidbits, Bite-Size Chemistry Concepts. Ang pag-uusapan natin would be all about stoichiometry, limiting versus excess reactant. Yung topic po natin ngayon is kind of exciting kasi ito yung isa sa mga topics in high school na nakakalito talaga because there is more than meets the eye kasi hindi porket marami is yun na yung excess reactant kaagad. Hindi porket maliit lang yung amount eh, yun yung limiting reactant ka agad. So, so yun, yun yung i-demystify natin ngayon. I hope you will enjoy this video lecture. And tara, simulan na natin. Bago natin simulan ng proper lecture video natin, let us first run through the lecture outline. First is, re-reviewin muna natin yung stoichiometry. Then, mag-discuss tayo ng limiting reactant and excess reactant. And lastly, different approaches both qualitatively and quantitatively para malaman natin which reactant is limiting and which reactant is excess. Ngayon, magre-review muna tayo ng stoichiometry. So, ano nga ba yung stoichiometry? It is the quantitative relationship between the amounts of reactants and the products in a chemical reaction. So, basically, yung concept ng stoichiometry is that given a balanced chemical equation, yung amount ng reactant mo can be used as an information to relate to the amount of the another reactant or to relate to the amount of products that is going to be formed and vice versa. Here, we have here the synthesis of water from 2H2 plus O2 yielding 2H2O. If we have a data in the grams of H2 or the moles of H2, we can use that and relate that to the amount, we can use that to determine the amount of O2 needed or to determine the amount of H2O that is going to be formed from that amount of reactant. So here, as well, we have the mole concept flowchart, which can serve as a guide in our stoichiometric calculations. For example, you wanted to convert the grams of substance A to the grams of substance B. So first, you can use the molar mass of A to convert it to the moles of substance A. The next step is you can use the coefficient in a balanced chemical equation to convert the moles of substance A to the moles of substance B. And finally, you can use the molar mass of B to arrive at the grams of substance B. So that is the concept of stoichiometry. Now let us have a review example of stoichiometry. So the problem, if we add 2.043 grams of sodium to water, how many grams of H2 are produced? Before doing the solution, first we have to take note of a couple of points. First, always and always start with a balanced chemical equation. If the equation given in the reaction is not balanced, you have to balance it to make use of the stoichiometric ratios in that chemical equation. Number two, determine your starting point. So, kailangan mong determine kung saan kung ano yung given at kung ano yung end goal na hinahanap ng problem. So, in this problem, the given value is 2.043 grams of sodium and yung hinahanap is the grams of H2. Number three is that use dimensional analysis to go from grams of sodium to mole of sodium to mole of H2 to grams of H2. So here, we have that given balanced chemical equation of the reaction. So we can use this stoichiometric ratios in the calculation for our solution. So we have to start with the 2.043 grams of sodium, then convert grams to moles of sodium by using the atomic mass of sodium. As we know that there is 22.99 grams of sodium and 1 mole of sodium. And then this one, this conversion factor is derived from the balanced chemical equation given that 2 moles of sodium is required to produce 1 mole of H2. Now finally, convert the moles of H2 to grams of H2. So we know that H2 has a molecular mass of 2.02. So evaluating the equation, doing the necessary cancellation of units, you will get 0 0.0898 
grams of H2. Now, let us proceed to the proper discussion and limiting versus excess reactant. So, pag sinabi natin limiting reactant, from the word limiting, siya yung unang mauubos. Limiting reactant is the reactant that will be used up first, consumed completely. Since siya yung unang may used up, siya rin yung magdedetermine ng maximum amount of products that is possible to be produced from that reaction. Conversely, yung excess reactant naman is yun yung reactant na may matitira. From the word excess, may matitira pa. So it is the reactant that will have an unreacted leftover. So yun yung definition ng limiting reactant ng excess reactant. Now, now to further cement our conceptual understanding of limiting and ver versus excess reactant, pwede natin gamitin ang sandwich analogy and pwede din natin gamitin ang qualitative na discussion with molecular visualization para ma-visualize talaga natin yung molecules, yung amount ng molecules. Makakatulong yun na to really grasp the concept of this topic of interest natin ngayon. You may scan the QR code or log into the link given in this slide to be directed to the FET simulator. So, andito na tayo sa website ng FET simulator. Reactants, products, and leftover. I-click muna natin yung sandwiches. The concept of limiting reactants and excess reactants can be described using the sandwich analogy. So, given here is the, is the recipe of the sandwich in if it's in molecule this is the balance equation so kada dalawang piraso ng tinapay and one piece of cheese ay makakabuo tayo ng isang sandwich so say for example may tatlo tayong pirasong tinapay and may isang pirasong cheese so yung mabubuo lang from this starting material would be isang sandwich may isang natirang tinapay at ubos lahat ng cheese. So from this visualization, makikita natin that since ubos lahat ng cheese, sa yung limiting reactant. And since may isa pang natira sa tinapay, so yung tinapay ang excess reactant. So how about when we say that there are four pieces of bread and then may tatlong cheese? From this starting material, makakabuo tayo ng dalawang pirasong sandwich. Then, ubus lahat ng tinapay and then may matitirang isang pirasong cheese. So from this, masasabi natin that yung tinapay ang limiting reactant dito at yung excess reagent naman or an excess reactant would be the cheese. The same concept applies using molecules. Say for example, so, ang synthesis ng ammonia or ang additional reaction of N2 and H2 to form NH3 has this balanced equation. So, kada isang molecule ng N2 at tatlong molecules ng H2 ay makakabuo ka ng dalawang molecule ng NH3. For example, if given na may isang molecule ng N2 at may apat na molecule ng H2, makakabuo tayo ng dalawang molecule ng NH3, ubos lahat ng N2, at may matitirang isang molecule ng H2. Now, from this, masasabi natin that N2 is the limiting reactant and H2 is the excess reactant. How about when we have 3 molecules of N2 and 3 molecules of H2? After reaction, we have 2 molecules of NH3, may natira pang 2 molecules ng N2, and then, wala nang natira for H2. Now, based on this visualization, masasabi natin that N2, since may natira pang dalawang molecule, is the excess reactant, and then H2 would be the limiting reactant. Now, let us try to answer some questions. Yung binigay na amount ng reactant is that there are 6 molecules of H2 and there are 5 molecules of O2. Now, the balance equation is that for every 2 molecules of H2 plus 1 molecule of O2, it will yield 2 H2O molecules. So, yung color white, yan yung H2. Yung color red or orange pa to, this is the O2. So, for every reaction, kailangan lang natin ng dalawang molecule ng H2 and then isang molecule ng O2. 
dalawang molecule ng H2 at isang molecule ng O2. Dalawang molecule ng H2 at isang molecule ng O2. So, we have 1, 2, 3 sets of reaction. Makakabuo pa ba tayo ng isa pang reaction? Hindi na, di ba? Kasi wala na ang H2. So, from this visualization, masasabi natin na we have 1, 2, 3 set of reaction. Yung mabubuo natin na H2O would be 3 times 2, we have 6. Meron tayong leftover na dalawang molecule ng O2. So, from this Visualization, masasabi natin qualitatively na yung H2 dahil ubus sa lahat, siya yung magsisilbing limiting reactant. At since yung O2 naman is may sobra, siya yung excess reactant. So that is how we determine qualitatively the excess and limiting reactant in a reaction. Ngayon naman, pag-uusapan natin yung quantitative na approach in determining which reactant is the limiting and which is excess. So we have three approaches. So approach 1 involves comparing mole ratios. When we say mole ratios, it is the mole of reactant over the coefficient in a balanced chemical equation. Approach 2 would involve comparing the required mole of the reactant and the available mole of the reactant given in the problem. And approach 3 would entail comparing the amount of products produced from the amount of each reactant. For example, we have a problem here. What is the limiting reagent or reactant if the if 76.4 grams of C2H3Br3 or terbromoethane were reacted with 49.1 grams of O2? Shown below is the balanced chemical equation of the reaction. So note that if in a, in a problem, the chemical equation is not balanced yet, we have to first balance it to make use of the stoichiometric ratios in the equation. So we will go about the problem in three different approaches. So in approach 1, we are to compare their mole ratios. So we have to solve for the mole ratio of each reactant. So in direction of solution natin is that given the grams, how are we going to convert it to moles? So from grams of the reactant to moles of the same reactant. So we have 76.4 grams. We make use of the molar mass of the reactant, C2H3Br3, as a molar mass of 266.72 grams. We make use of this conversion factor to yield the number of moles of that reactant. Evaluating the equation, we will get 0.286 moles of tribromoethane. For oxygen, naman, we have 49.1 grams given in the problem. We make use of the fact that 1 mole is equivalent to 32 grams of O2. So, evaluating the equation, we will get 1.53 moles of O2. Now, we calculate the mole ratios. So, the mole ratio, again, is the mole of the reactant over the coefficient in a balanced chemical equation. So, we have 0.286 moles of tribromoethane. And from the balanced chemical equation, we have 4 moles of tribromoethane. Dividing the two values, we will get 0.0715. The same way, in oxygen, we have 1.53 moles of O2 over 11 moles of O2 coming from the balanced chemical equation, we will get 0.139. Comparing the two mole ratios, we can say that the mole ratio, 0.0715, is less than 0.139 mole ratio. Since the mole ratio of tribromoethane is lesser, we can deduce that tribromoethane is the limiting reactant. Now, let us try to go about the problem using approach 2, comparing the required mole of the reactant and the available mole of the reactant. So, in this approach, the direction of the solution would be from grams of substance A to the moles of substance B. In the approach 1, we have already converted the grams of the reactants to their mole equivalents. What we only need to do is to convert the moles of tribromoethane to the required mole of oxygen and to convert the moles of oxygen to the required mole of tribromoethane. So let's start with tribromoethane. So we have 0.86 mole of tribromoethane and we're going to convert it to the mole of required oxygen. In conversion of moles of substance A to the moles of substance B, we have to use the coefficients of A and B from the balance equation. So we make use of the stoichiometric coefficients from the balanced chemical equation, 
so 11 mole of O2 over 4 mole of cerebromoethane. Evaluating the equation, we will get 0.787 mole of O2. For O2 naman, we have 1.53 mole of O2 in the problem and we are to convert it to the mole of required tribromoethane. So 1.53 mole of O2 using the stoichiometric coefficients from the balanced chemical equation, 4 mole of tribromoethane over 11 mole of O2, we will get 0.556 mole of tribromoethane. Now we're going to make sense of these values. 1.53 mole of oxygen would require 0.556 mole of tribromoethane. But in the problem, we only have 0.286 moles of tribromoethane. So, given that tribromoethane is lacking, we can say that tribromoethane is the limiting reactant. Conversely, since 0.286 mole of tribromoethane would require 0.787 for complete reaction, and then yung available natin in the problem is 1.53, which is which is sobra sobra for 0.787. This means to say that may matitira pa sa oxygen. Thus, oxygen is the excess reactant. Now, let us try to solve the problem using approach 3, comparing the amount of product produced from the amount of each reactant. So, yung magiging directional solution natin is from grams of substance A to the grams of substance B or the grams of the product. So, since we're dealing with a combustion reaction that has three products, we can just choose one. In this case, we choose carbon dioxide. So from the grams of tribromoethane given in the problem, we multiply it with the conversion factor that uses the molar mass of tribromoethane, then the stoichiometric coefficients in the balanced chemical equation, and then finally is the conversion of the moles to the grams of carbon dioxide using the molar mass of carbon dioxide, which is 44.01 grams. Evaluating the equation, Mahukuha natin is 25.2 grams of CO2. Now, for the case of oxygen, we have 49.1 grams of O2. Pareha lang kanina, we convert that grams of O2 to moles of O2 and then convert moles of O2 to moles of CO2 using the stoichiometric coefficients from the, chem from the balanced chemical equation. Then convert the moles of CO2 to the grams of CO2 using the molar mass of CO2. Evaluating the equation, we will get 49.1 grams of CO2. Now, whichever of the reactant that produced the smaller amount means that that reactant is the limiting reagent. It also follows that the reactant that produced the larger amount of product is the excess reactant. So from here, the two values must be the na produce ng tribromoethane. So yung tribromoethane ang limiting reactant. And we can say that the oxygen is the excess reactant. Now, if you're interested for more exercises, you may scan the QR code or log into the link to get the worksheet with exercises. That concludes our discussion for limiting versus excess reactant. Muli, this is Chemistry Tidbits, Bite Size Chemistry Concept. Thank you for tuning in.